Hi everyone and welcome to another video tutorial by Laureate. In this session, I'll show you how you can push your data from the network server to an IoT platform. I have picked the platform as an example, it's called Ubidots, and I'll be using an account on one of our community public servers. I'll show you how easy it is to create a new output in order to push the data in real time towards the IoT platform. I'll be using a Lorex One, which is a LoRaWAN gateway, and a digital matter device called Oyster, which is a LoRaWAN device for GPS tracking. We'll also see how you can decode the payload and how you can check the information coming from the device on some nice dashboards. I hope you find this interesting, so let's get started. Okay, so this is Laureate's main dashboard. I logged in using my account on our eu3.laureate.io, one of our community public servers. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the network section here on the left panel. This is my network. And in this network, I have the LoRaWAN gateway. It's a Lorix one. So if I click on it, I access the gateways page. And then we can check that uh, the gateway is showing us connected. If I ping the gateway, I get a response up here on the right side saying that uh, everything is ready. So regarding connectivity, the gateway is basically ready to listen to any LoRaWAN payload that's coming from any LoRaWAN device that's in range. If I go back to our main dashboard, let's go to the application section. I've got a couple of applications here. This is the home one that I'm going to use. And in this application, I have a couple of devices registered. In this case, we're going to use the Oyster GPS tracker made by Digital Matter. So if I click on it, I access the devices page and I can see here on the right side that there are some LoRaWAN payloads that have been generated recently. So these are the payloads that we're going to use in order to push them towards the IoT platform and be able to decode them there and extract the different values coming from the sensor. Now back to our main dashboard. The next thing we're going to check is our public documentation page that you can find at docs.lorio.io. And this what you see here is the setup guideline for the UBDocs platform. As you can see, it's an integration that's based on the HTTPS protocol. So following the instructions, the first thing you need to do is check this link here and create an account. You need to make sure you choose this for business option that's going to enable a 30-day trial version of the platform so that you can give it a try. Now, the way this integration works is that devices do not need to be created on the IoT platform because they're automatically created once the LoRaWAN payloads coming from the network server arrive on the platform. So, Following the instructions, once you log in, the first thing you need to do is create what they call a function. So let's have a look at how you should do that. So you go to the UbiDots platform. This is the main dashboard that you find when you first log in. And under this devices menu, there's this option called functions. Now in my case, I have a couple of functions that I created already. If you don't have one yet. You just need to click on this Create Function button. Let's have a look at the one I created for the Oyster GPS tracker. Now the function has uh, this left panel where you need to enter these different configurations. This is something that you can check on our setup guidelines. As you can see, you need to give the function a name, obviously. You need to select Post as the method, Node GS10 as the default runtime, and then this option called time-based trigger, you need to just leave it disabled. Back to the platform, everything is ready. And then here on the right side, there's this script that you need to adapt to include the decoding details of your device. Now, this is something that will change from LoRaWAN device to LoRaWAN device. They're all different. So the device manufacturer is actually the one that should give you the details how to decode the payloads coming from from their LoRaWAN device. In my case, I went to the official website of Digital Matter where they have this online decoder. So you click here, it opens a new tab with the online decoder. So you press F12 and then you access the script. And these are actually, this is the function that I had to copy and I had to paste on the function on the IoT platform. So I just had to adapt this script here 
Actually, once you first create the function, there are some basic lines of code that are automatically created by the platform. So you just need to find this function decoder and just adapt it so that it can uh, actually read and decode the lower one payloads coming from your device. Once the script is ready, you click on make it live, continue, and make sure that you copy the URL because what you need to do now is go back to the Laureate network server. You go to our application and here on the left panel, we can find the output section. Now, in my case, I already created a new output, a new HTTPS output, and I copied and pasted here the URL that I found on UbiDots. If you need to create a new output, you just click on add new output and here are all the different standard protocols, integrations and platforms that you can use. In our case, it's the HTTPS one. So you paste the URL that you got from the platform and you just add a new output and then you're ready. Now what happens when you do that is that the platform will be waiting for the first payload to come from the network server in order to create the device. This is something you can find here under devices. There's this device option here. And in my case, I already have a couple of them. And this is the one that was created when the first payload arrived from the GPS tracker, from the Oster Lora One device. Now, if you access the devices page, you can find here all the different values that were decoded once the function got the payload, read it and decoded it. So, so you can see there's information regarding speed, for example. These are all the different values. I can even show more rows the page here. So, so you can see most of the times the value is zero. This is measured in kilometers per hour, but this is, for example, the device moving at one kilometer per hour. And there should also be like some different values, like for example, here, four kilometers per hour. Now that's something that has been decoded by the platform. And actually there are also all these different values that the platform is showing. And not only we can access all the historic of payloads for each one of the values, but if we go to this data menu here, you can also create some dashboards with the information that we are receiving from the device. In my case, I just added like some different ones, like the one regarding speed, for example. Uh, you can even change the configuration of each one of these uh, different gadgets. And in my case, it's showing the average speed, but we can also show like what the minimum speed is, maximum speed is, and so on. So each one of these gadgets has its own configuration. And if you want to create a new one, there's this button here on the right side where you, depending on the use case and depending on the type of device that you're using, you would be able to add a new gadget and show it on the main dashboard. If you want to have more information about UbiDots, make sure you get in touch with them. They will be happy to provide a demo of their platform for you. So from my side, this was everything. I just wanted to show you how to easily push the data from your network server account to an IoT platform that I chose as an example. So please stay tuned for more videos to come. Thank you very much and have a nice one.